Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be making NN dimethyl aniline from our previously synthesized precursors methyl iodide and aniline. Dimethyl aniline is an organic building block which is often found in different azo dyes and I have tried to synthesize it a few times before. My first attempt at doing so was to try an eschweiler clark reaction on aniline, which is a form of reductive methylation using formaldehyde and formic acid as the reducing agent. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of footage of this, but the reaction immediately polymerized into a soft jello-like substance, and upon drying, it solidified into this plastic block. This is pretty cool, but not what I wanted. I then looked up a few different methods like using methanol and aniline directly. However, this is done in an autoclave under high pressure, so that's not an option. And other methylating agents like dimethyl sulfate are not my preferred choices. At this point, methyl iodide was my biggest hope for obtaining a methylated aniline, but it has the drawback that it isn't very selective in the formation of tertiary amines, and also forms a lot of quaternary ammonium salts. But then after a little bit of digging, I found an interesting paper, which details the decomposition of quaternary ammonium salts into tertiary amines, by refluxing the salt in ethylene amine as a solvent. This allows the methyl group to be transferred to the more reactive alkyl amine, and according to the paper, this reaction works especially well on ammonium salts, which have a phenyl substituent due to their low basicity. Honestly, it's like this paper was written for me. Now we can combine all those steps to the full synthetic pathway. Starting from aniline, I will first synthesize the quaternary ammonium salt by reaction with methyl iodide, and I will then decompose the salt into dimethyl aniline by refluxing it in ethanol amine. The chemicals required for the first part of the synthesis are aniline, methyl iodide and triethylamine, which is an organic base. Before I can start with the synthesis, the aniline has to be cleaned up. During its storage time it has oxidized quite a bit and has turned into a deep red color. So I quickly perform a vacuum distillation. The distillate is completely colorless, which you could say is the true color of aniline. 28 grams of the fresh aniline are now weighed out and transferred to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. Additionally, 72 grams of triethylamine are also added to the flask. The beaker is then rinsed with 80 milliliters of acetone, which will serve as the solvent for this reaction. 136 grams of methyl iodide are transferred into a 100 milliliter addition funnel and placed on one of the side necks of the round bottom flask. The methyl iodide is used in large excess, which is typical for this type of reaction, which is referred to as an exhaustive methylation. That's a pretty fancy name, but it's just a nucleophilic substitution, or SN reaction for short. The amine on the aniline acts as a nucleophile and attacks the carbon of the methyl iodide. The reaction can then proceed via two distinct routes, either as SN1 type, where the leaving group, in this case iodine, is eliminated first and a carbocation is formed, which is then attacked by the nucleophile, or as SN2 type, where formation of the new bond and elimination happens simultaneously in a planar transition state. Both pathways will yield the same product, which is the methylated aniline and hydrogen iodide, which is then scooped up by our base. Which version takes place is influenced by many factors like solvent type, reaction temperature and stability of the carbocation. In this case, it's pretty easy to say that the reaction will strongly favor SN2, as methyl cations are usually avoided by the chemistry gods. This process will then continue until the amine has been fully methylated. The addition of the methyl iodide is very exothermic, which is why I added an ice bath. And just in case, I also installed a reflux condenser on top. 
During the addition, I will aim to not let the temperature rise above 30 C. This serves mainly to prevent the methyl iodide from boiling, but it might also limit some side reactions. After all the methyl iodide has been added, the mixture is allowed to stir overnight. The next day we can check up on the reaction progress by performing a TLC. On the left is a reference for aniline and on the right is our reaction mixture. Under UV light we can see four distinct spots from the reaction mix. The lowest spot is the ammonium salt, it's very polar so it doesn't move on the plate. The highest spot is dimethyl aniline and below that is what I suspect to be monomethylated aniline. And another faint spot which isn't easy to see on camera but trust me it's there. It's on the same height as the aniline reference so there's still some unreacted aniline left. Therefore I add some additional methyl iodide to the flask in order to push the reaction to completion. The amount isn't super important, it's round about 10 milliliters. After two more hours of stirring, I perform another TLC. The aniline spot has now completely disappeared. There's still some of the presumed monomethyl product there, but I'll stop the reaction at this point. Now all of the acetone is removed under a slight vacuum. I use a respirator pump for this step instead of my regular vacuum pump because I was lazy and didn't want to set up a cooling trap. Once no more distillate is collected, I pull a strong vacuum to attempt to remove the last bits of solvent. I then install a reflux condenser and a heating mantle and add 200 milliliters of ethanol amine to the flask. The heat is then turned up to get the mixture to reflux temperature, which for ethanol amine is at around 170 C. The high temperature will cause one of the methyl groups from the trimethyl ammonium iodide to transfer to the ethanol amine and form the desired dimethyl aniline. According to the paper, this transition should be completed after 5 minutes at reflux. But apparently I didn't do that great of a job removing all of the solvent because the mixture doesn't get hotter than 140 C. The reaction also occurs at temperatures as low as 100 C but the reflux time is considerably longer. Therefore I continue refluxing for another 30 minutes. I check up on the reaction progress with another TLC and there's still ammonium salt left so I continue heating for another hour. After that hour, there's still ammonium salt left in the mixture, which is quite suspicious, because one hour is definitely more than I needed in previous attempts. So I try to distill whatever causes the temperature to remain at 140 C, which is most likely acetone or unreacted triethylamine. According to the boiling point and the stingy fish stench of this fraction, it's definitely triethylamine which is coming over. With that out of the way, I continue refluxing for another hour in the hopes that this will finally improve the conversion, because there's not a lot more I can do now except for more reflux. After another hour, I decide to continue with the procedure and simply hope that the majority of salt has been converted. To separate the dimethyl ethylene from the crude mixture in the original paper, they simply diluted the ethyl amine with water and then extracted the product. However, my glassware is simply too small to deal with the amounts of water this would require at my scale. I will therefore steam distill the dimethyl aniline. However, the ethanol amine also co-distills with water. 
In order to prevent this, I will neutralize the solution with hydrochloric acid. The ethanol amine is much more basic than the dimethyl enolene, so it will be converted into a salt at a pH around 7, where the dimethyl enolene will still be free based. And as a salt, ethanol amine will no longer distill over. Because this will require a large volume of acid, I transfer the mix into a 1 liter flask and I also put some ice in the flask to help cool the mixture as this process will be very exothermic. The ice melts quite quickly when adding the acid and you can see just how exothermic this process actually is by the temperature increase on the thermometer. I'm also adding 32% acid to this flask in an attempt to keep the volume down, but it's just not enough to neutralize all of the amine. Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. I've really pushed the capacity of this flask but now I can't add any more, so I just have to live with some ethanol amine also coming over. I can take care of that in the worker. After distilling about 400 milliliters, I stop the distillation. The yellow oil floating on the water is our product. In the distilling flask, the crude has changed color into this vomit green and there's also some solid stuff in there. Looks really appetizing. Both of the fractions are combined in a large beaker. There's some ethanol amine in these fractions, which you can easily tell by the alkaline pH and the nasty ammonia smell. Therefore, I neutralize the solution with some dilute hydrochloric acid. I then pour the solution into a large separatory funnel and separate the top organic layer. The aqueous phase is poured back into the funnel and extracted three times with diethyl ether. Apparently, the water was still a little bit too warm because when shaking and venting the funnel for the first extraction... Yep, that's all of the ether evaporating. Whoops! Anyways, I let the solution stand for a bit longer to cool down and then continue the extraction. The combined extracts are then dried with magnesium sulfate and filtered into another flask. I now remove the ether via short path distillation and then pull a strong vacuum to distill the dimethyl enoly. Okay, we're done with the distillation and we have a nice colorless oil as our distillate, which is exactly what we want. Now we can calculate the yield and... Yeah, I was not happy with that, so I additionally sorted out the aqueous phase and extracted again. I really should have done that in the first run, but I didn't because I'm stupid. So, now you get to enjoy this montage of me doing the exact same thing all over again. After two more hours of unnecessary work, I've gotten almost the same amount as before. 
The total amount that I have now is 14.11 grams of dimethyl aniline, which gives us a yield of 38.8%. This is an acceptable amount, but still not great. The paper has reported an 83% yield after 20 minutes of heating an ethyl amine. However, they did use a different workup method, so I'm gonna blame it on that. There's a good chance that there might still be product in the aqueous phase, but I'm not gonna run another extraction. All in all, this was a successful synthesis, and I have enough dimethylaniline for the last part of this project, where we'll be making methyl orange and some other dyes as well. Until then, I wish you all a pleasant day, and stay tuned.